Believers, including pastors and theology students, who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. My name is Shin Myung-gun, and I'll be your host today. I sincerely thank all of you for attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, which is being broadcast live to the whole world. Before we start the seminar, let us pray with a united heart. Father God, the Most Holy, who is full of love and grace, we thank you and give all glory to you as we also thank Jesus who bore the cross for us to be sacrificed for our sins. Continuing from the words of Revelation, which is a new covenant, following the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, you have allowed us to sound out the trumpet to the whole world through the revealed word of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. We once again offer up all glory and thanks to you. Please let everyone who hears these words to clearly perceive that this is a time of the fulfillment of Revelation and let them think about who they are according to the Bible and what the sound of the last trumpet has to do with them as they hear these words. Please let it be a gracious time of precious perception through today's seminar titled The New Covenant Established by the Blood of Jesus. With the faith that you'll fulfill all these things for us, we pray in the name of our Savior Jesus, who is full of love and grace. Amen. Today, we'll hear the testimony of God's Word through Intermediate Lesson 12, The New Covenant Established by the Blood of Jesus. Please write these words of testimony deeply in your heart, and I hope you'll have a meaningful time of receiving much perception. We'll welcome up Instructor Jung Jae Sung from Thomas Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, who will be testifying to the new covenant established by the blood of Jesus. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world whose hope is in heaven and eternal life, it is nice to meet you. My name is Chong Chae Hong, a center instructor from Thomas Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I wanted to express my sincere thanks to everyone who attended this Shincheonji online seminar for the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. Today, I'll be testifying to intermediate lesson titled, The New Covenant Established by the Blood of Jesus. The main reference is Luke chapter 22, and the additional reference is Revelation chapter 5 and Revelation chapter 7. There are pastors who may or may not know this word. However, through this time, I hope that you will have a precious time to check the answer through today's lesson. Also, I hope that it will be a precious time for you to perceive what this has to do with us living in this era. First, I'll briefly explain to you the main reference verse of Luke chapter 22. Luke was recorded roughly 2,000 years ago. The one who recorded it was the one who believed and followed Jesus. It is Luke who recorded the book of Luke and Acts. What is important is the content of today's main reference. Luke chapter 22 is a chapter in which Jesus establishes the new covenant. Today's title is a new covenant established by the blood of Jesus. The reason why it is expressed as a new covenant is because there was a previous old covenant. Then, we will first take a look at what the reason the new covenant was made. 
The content of the first covenant is recorded well in Exodus chapter 19, verses 5 to 6. It is a content where God made a covenant with the physical Israelites. God commanded Moses that if you obey me fully and keep the covenant, that they would be a treasured possession, a holy nation, and a kingdom of priests. God also commanded Moses to tell these words to the children of physical Israel. Just like this, God made a covenant with physical Israel. Among the content of the covenant, the most important and the first commandment was not to have any other gods before God as recorded in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. However, the physical Israelites made a covenant, but you can see in 1 Kings chapter 11, where the king of Israel, Solomon, worshipped a Gentile god, and the Israelites as well followed and worshipped Gentile gods. As a result, they broke the covenant with God and the promise came to an end. Like this, let's read Hosea chapter 6, verse 7, to see what God said about the physical Israelites who broke the covenant. Like Adam, they broke the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Like this, God said that the physical Israelites who broke the covenant to God in this way broke the promise and rebelled just like Adam. The physical Israelites born with the sinful nature of Adam also broke the covenant with God and betrayed. Like this, the betrayal of physical Israel can be seen in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7, written as he found fault in the first covenant. Because of the fault found in the first covenant, God promised to create a new thing through the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah. As seen in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22, God promised the creation of a new thing. A new thing is different from the previous. The creation of a new thing is where there is no sin, and as a result of God's kingdom that is created, the completion of the new thing is in Revelation chapter 21, where the new heaven and the new earth is created and completed. The creation of a new thing is a creation of new heaven and new earth, Shintenji. God promises two very important things to the prophet Jeremiah for the creation of a new work, that is, the new heaven and new earth. These are the contents of the two promises to fulfill the creation of a new thing. The first is recorded in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, promising the planting of the two types of seeds. Also, the second is recorded in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The main content for today, which is promising a new covenant. God proclaimed these two important promises to the people of Israel for about 600 years for the creation of a new thing. This promise fulfills when Jesus came 600 years later at the time of the first coming. God who promised this comes to Jesus and fulfills the prophecy about the new covenant promised through the prophet Jeremiah. That content is today's main reference found in Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. Let's read this together. 
When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until he finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The content that was just read is that God promised through the Old Testament prophets that He came to Jesus and established a new covenant. The new covenant is a covenant Jesus made with His disciples. The new covenant was made on the night of the Passover. The content of the new covenant is what is important. That content states the fruit of the vine will not be eaten until the kingdom of God comes and the promise that the Passover meal will not be eaten until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. In other words, when the time for the kingdom of God comes, it will be the time where God's kingdom fulfills, which means we will be able to eat and drink the Passover meal from the vine again. To summarize, the main content of the new covenant is a promise that at the time of the second coming, when the kingdom of God comes and is fulfilled, we will be able to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal again, inside of God's kingdom. If so, when will this new covenant be fulfilled? The new covenant is revelation. If the new covenant is revelation, then the time of the second coming is when revelation, the new covenant, is fulfilled. The time of the second coming, when the kingdom of God comes, is the fulfillment of the new covenant. We believers must also keep the new covenant. In order to keep the new covenant, we must eat the flesh and blood of Jesus in the promised kingdom of God. The new covenant can be kept when you know what the Passover meal, Jesus' flesh and blood is, that you must eat. That is why we will look at the true meaning of Jesus' flesh and blood, the Passover meal that we must eat. At the time of Moses, to avoid the plague, the Israelites slaughtered a lamb, roasted it over the fire, and ate it. The blood was put on the sides and tops of the door frames. As a result, the plague passed. It was called Passover because the plague had passed over. In the same way, borrowing the time of Moses figuratively, regarding Jesus who delivered us out from our sins, is called the Lamb in John chapter 1, verse 29. Then, what is the Lamb, the flesh and blood of Jesus, that we must eat? In John chapter 6, verses 51 to 58, Jesus said, He is a living bread that comes down from heaven. Then Jesus is the food of heaven and is the food of heaven itself. 
We must eat Jesus. But how can we really eat the flesh and blood of Jesus? Jesus said, You must eat my flesh and drink my blood to have eternal life. Then, what is the flesh and blood of Jesus that we must eat and drink to gain eternal life? That is Jesus' words of life. Jesus' words of life is a reality of Jesus' flesh and blood. The main content of the new covenant that Jesus established in Luke chapter 22 is a promise to eat the Passover meal, Jesus' words of life again, in the kingdom of God when it is fulfilled at the time of the second coming. I'll say it one more time because it's so important. The main content of the new covenant is that God's kingdom will come. And at the second coming, when God's kingdom fulfills, Jesus' words of life, the Passover meal, will be eaten again inside of God's kingdom. What we believers need to know is that God and Jesus will always fulfill their promises. If that is so, we believers must keep this new covenant. We need to know the content of the new covenant so that when it fulfills, we can believe and keep it. In order to keep the new covenant, What is the content of the new covenant that we must know? First, we need to know where the promised kingdom of God is, where we can eat the flesh and blood of Jesus. Second, we need to know the reality of when and who it is that eats the flesh and blood of Jesus the Passover meal. Third, we need to know how to eat Jesus' flesh and blood and by what process. Fourth, we need to know what the outcome of those who eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, those who keep the new covenant, are. We must know the content of the new covenant with certainty so that when the new covenant revelation fulfills at the second coming, we can believe and keep it. Then, let's start by looking at where the promised kingdom of God is where we will eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal, when the new covenant is fulfilled at the second coming. At the time of the second coming, when the new covenant, Revelation is fulfilled, we can see in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10, that God's kingdom that is purchased with the blood of Jesus appears. Regarding this kingdom, we can see in one of the four Gospels in Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 to 12, that the subjects of the kingdom were kicked out and there are those who come from the east and the west. It says that these people are those who will sit in the kingdom of heaven. This kingdom of heaven is a promised kingdom of God. And if that is so, how did those who sit in the kingdom of heaven that came from the east and the west gather? They are the believers who have been harvested according to the words of Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16. That is, grain. This barn where the harvested grains are gathered is the kingdom of heaven where those who came from the east to the west sit. 
It is also the kingdom of God promised in the new covenant. Also, in Revelation chapter 7, like this, the harvested crops that were sealed and created are the sealed 144,000. Also, it is recorded that the great multitude who washed their robes by the blood of Jesus came out of the twelve tribes. Then, we can see there are the sealed 144,000 and a great multitude where the twelve tribes are at is the promised kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the barn. This is a kingdom purchased by the blood of Jesus. There is no sin and is a kingdom where God and Jesus are one with. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, the throne of God is one, and so is Jesus, the Lamb. And the harvested first fruits, the 144,000 that are at Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the barn and is God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. This place is where the twelve tribes are at. God, Jesus, are one with this place and there is no sin in this kingdom. Like Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 4, there is a kingdom where God and the kingdom of heaven comes down upon. It is the new heaven and new earth that is created after the first heaven and the first earth have passed away and there was no longer any sea. This is a kingdom of God where you can eat the promised Passover meal. This is the kingdom of God where God, Jesus, and heaven come down to be eternally with. Ultimately, there is no sin, and this new heaven and new earth that God created and is one with is a new thing that was promised through the prophet Jeremiah. Therefore, as seen through the Bible, the kingdom of God where the Passover meal can be eaten, that is, promised in the new covenant, is God's new kingdom, new people, the twelve tribes. The promised new heaven and new earth, the twelve tribes of Shintenji, have been created according to the new covenant, as it had been stamped with it, including its name and structure. All of these things were created according to the promise of the new covenant. The creation that was made according to the promise of the new covenant is Jesus fulfilling the promised new covenant. If that is so, then as believers, keeping this promise and belonging to the twelve tribes is a path we must go as believers. Then, as promised in God's kingdom, let's find out who the reality of the people are that eat the Passover meal, Jesus' flesh and blood. To find out what it is, let's read Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10 together. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. We have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. The verse we just read in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10, is so important. It is talking about the kingdom of God that was purchased by the blood of Jesus at the time of Revelation's fulfillment 
when the new covenant is fulfilled. Also, it is about the kingdom and priests that were purchased by the blood of Jesus. Like it says in Revelation chapter 7, God's kingdom and priests are the 144,000 of the 12 tribes that have been harvested and sealed. Also, as seen in Revelation chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, states, There is a great multitude who washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, who came out to the twelve tribes of the kingdom of God. In this way, the kingdom of priests and the great multitude in white, in God's kingdom, the twelve tribes, are the reality of those who are eating the flesh and blood of the Lamb, the Passover meal according to the promise of the new covenant. The twelve tribes of this new kingdom and new people are the family of God that have been freed from sins through the blood of Jesus as seen in Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6. Also, God makes them His kingdom and priests. Like this, the twelve tribes, the family of God, are those who keep the new covenant and are sealed with the word, the law of God, written on their minds and hearts as seen and recorded in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. The sealed twelve tribes are those who keep the new covenant. And it is said that God will remember their sins no more, and they are the reality of those whose sins are atoned. The new covenant revelation must be understood in order to believe and keep it when it fulfills. It's not just a matter of knowing or not knowing. And it's not a matter of just ending it with keeping it or not keeping it. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, it says that if you add or subtract to the book of Revelation, the new covenant, you cannot go to the kingdom of heaven, but will receive plagues. We have to know the new covenant, Revelation, that way we can believe and keep the promised new covenant when it fulfills and enter the kingdom of heaven that we hoped for. In the end, as promised, the reality of those who eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal, are the 144,000 of the 12 tribes and the great multitude in white that appear at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. The blood of Jesus was used to create the 12 tribes. Also, the effect of that blood appears today at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. By keeping the new covenant, the 144,000 of the 12 tribes and the great multitude in white will be atoned for their sins and receive salvation. I hope that all of us believers can keep the new covenant, belong to the 12 tribes, and become the true children of God recognized by God reaching the purpose of our faith, which is the kingdom of heaven and salvation. Like this, in order to receive the atonement of sin and receive salvation, we must eat the flesh and blood of Jesus the Passover meal. We will take a look at how the family of God that belongs to the 12 tribes can eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal. To understand this, let's read Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, will must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. In order to keep the new covenant, we need to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal, the revealed word of Jesus. 
Let's find out how we can hear and eat this revelation of Jesus in the kingdom of God. When the word revelation appears, it means that previously it was sealed. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 1, it says, There is a sealed scroll in God's right hand. This scroll is a secret to the kingdom of heaven. It is the new covenant, the book of Revelation. There is no one who can open or look inside the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, the book of Revelation. However, Jesus takes this book and Jesus, who overcame, opens all of the seven seals in Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 8. Jesus opens all the seven seals, and now it is no longer a sealed scroll, but an opened revelation. That is why it is called the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is important is that this open scroll, the book of Revelation, is a reality of the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal that we will eat again as promised at the second coming when the kingdom of God comes, when the new covenant fulfills. So, listening to and eating the open scroll of Revelation is eating the Passover meal and it is keeping the new covenant. As seen in Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 to 2, Jesus gives this open scroll to the angel. This angel who received the open scroll, as seen in Revelation chapter 10, verses 8 to 10, gives it to John for him to eat. John, who received and ate the open scroll, as stated in Revelation chapter 10, verse 11, testifies it to the peoples, nations, languages, and kings. When this revealed word is testified, there are those who hear, believe, and keep the words, and they are the twelve tribes, God's new kingdom and new people, as written and recorded in Revelation chapter 7. They are the reality of the servants who hear and keep the words of Revelation. When we take a look at this process, the only way and method to hear this revelation and eat the words of Jesus, which is the Passover meal, is to meet John who received and ate this opened scroll. However, there is something really important here. When the New Covenant, the book of Revelation, is fulfilled, it is not John, the apostle of Jesus of 2,000 years ago, that receives, eats, and testifies to this revelation. Like it says in Hosea chapter 12, verse 10, he spoke to the prophets, telling parables through them. When the book of Revelation fulfills, there will be a person parable like Apostle John that appears, which is the promised shepherd, new John, who receives the Passover meal, the revelation, and testifies to it, making him the reality of the promised shepherd. If you cannot meet this promised shepherd, new John, then you cannot hear or eat the Passover meal, the flesh and blood of Jesus. If that is the case, then the new covenant cannot be kept either. This is not a route made by man. This is the route promised by God and Jesus. Like this, when the new covenant is fulfilled, meeting the promised shepherd, new John, who received the open scroll and ate it, and hearing the word of revelation, is to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal, and is the only way to keep the new covenant. 
Then, the promised shepherd, New John, is very important for us believers who must keep the new covenant. The reason why the promised shepherd who received the open scroll is so important is that the book of Revelation, the secrets to the kingdom of heaven, the new covenant that God recorded, is in his stomach. There is only one opened scroll. The promised shepherd who ate the open scroll is also only one. Therefore, no one except New John, the promised shepherd, can testify to the words of Revelation, the flesh and blood of Jesus. Also, no one has this open scroll of Revelation. After receiving and eating this open scroll, and after seeing and hearing all the events of this scroll, We can only know the events of Revelation after meeting New John and receiving the testimony to know the events of Revelation and can have actions to keep it. This is not only a matter of knowledge, but can be a very important thing that divides heaven and hell. In this way, when Jesus fulfills a new covenant, Revelation, All the events that fulfilled will be shown to New John who received and ate the open scroll, which is the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Revelation. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 8, it says, It is I, John, who heard and saw all these things. In the content of the book of Revelation, the phrase, I saw, appears repeatedly. At the time of the second coming, the fulfillment of Revelation, there is one person, New John, who sees and hears all the events of Revelation, the New Covenant. That one person is a promised shepherd, New John. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, that the one who saw and heard all these things is New John, who was sent as a messenger of Jesus with the duty to give the testimony to the churches for everything that was seen and heard in Revelation. New John, the promised shepherd who received this duty, is faithfully fulfilling the duty he received. If you are a believer who wants to keep the new covenant and go to heaven, You should be delighted at the appearance of the messenger of Jesus, the promised shepherd, New John. And you should also listen to, perceive, and keep the word. As we confirm with the word of God, the promised shepherd is New John, the one who overcomes, who testifies to the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal that has been promised in the new covenant, Jesus' word of revelation. I will conclude with the conclusion of the new covenant established with Jesus' blood that was testified today. First, the main point of the new covenant is the content of the promise that we will eat again the Passover meal, Jesus' words of life, in the kingdom of God when it comes down at the time of the second coming. The second, there is a kingdom of God where you can eat this food and that place is God's new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes. The kingdom that Jesus promised and created are those who are purchased by Jesus' blood the kingdom of God, the twelve tribes. The creation of the twelve tribes is the fulfillment of the new covenant. Thirdly, the reality of those who eat the flesh and blood of Jesus are the twelve tribes, the 144,000, and the great multitude dressed in white. Fourth, the method to eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, the Passover meal, can only be eaten as promised through the one who overcomes, New John. Finally, the result of those who eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, 
that is the result of those who keep the new covenant is that God makes them His kingdom and priests, and the great multitude dressed in white are washed in the blood, receive atonement of sins and salvation. Ultimately, the conclusion of today's content is that those who eat the Passover meal, keep the new covenant, receive atonement of sins, salvation, and the kingdom of heaven. Today, I talked about the new covenant established by Jesus' blood in Lesson 12 of Intermediate. The next lesson will be testified on the word in the beginning and being born again, which are in John chapter 1 and John chapter 3. The instructor who will testify to the word next time is a better instructor than me who testifies to the word very well. Please do not miss the next lesson, and we hope that you will be able to attend and receive much grace. We are one in God, Jesus, and the Bible. I will proclaim we are one. We'd appreciate it if you could join us. We are one in God, Jesus, and the Bible. We are one. We will pray to God at this time. Father God, we truly thank you. We sincerely thank you for giving us the food of heaven today and for giving us this precious perception and grace. Just like the word you have given us today, please give us the grace to become the true believers who can please you and Jesus by keeping the promise of the new covenant made by Jesus. Please show your infinite grace and love to all the pastors, theology students, and congregation members who attended today. Father, please protect so that no one gets hurt during these difficult times. And I pray earnestly at this time for those who want to hear your word in the next lesson that they will attend and be guided to have a precious time of receiving grace. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who atoned us for our sins. Amen. We sincerely thank everyone who watched until the very end. Thank you. What is a word in the beginning? What does it mean to be reborn? The word in the beginning is God. Becoming reborn refers to the rebirth of one's spirit. People who truly believe in God, Jesus, and the Word must not be done with just hearing the Word. They must act according to the Word and become reborn with the water of life. I believe everyone had a gracious time of great perception through the precious words testified today. Next time, we'll continue sharing God's Word through Intermediate Lesson 13, The Word in the Beginning and Becoming Reborn. Please do attend the next seminar too and receive precious perception. Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, is being broadcast to the whole world in various languages via Shincheonji's official YouTube channel. This is why anyone can hear these words if they wish to do so. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or the Revealed Word in general, please contact us by calling the numbers on the screen. We'll conclude today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today.